Hey guys, welcome back. Robocraft Early Access Coverage. This is episode 35. I'm Enigmas, and today we're prototyping a brand new bot. By prototyping, I mean we're messing around. We're, we're doing some layout, we're doing some stuff that will eventually lead us to a finished bot. Compared to the last time I did a prototype bot and showed you guys, we aren't going to be duplicating this in the next bay over, so to speak. Once we've got this done, the layout is done, all we're going to have left to do is swap out the white blocks that we're using now for the chassis blocks that'll be part of the finished bot. It's going to be too large to do one prototype version and then duplicate it in the next bay over. That's why that we're just going to do the swap approach. What we're going to be focused on on this episode is just doing a layout. Because this is sort of one of those things that I haven't really been too worried about doing up to this point, but this bot is going to be very, very large relative to a lot of the bots that you see. If we don't do a little bit of extra time in the layout part of things, we can easily get to a point later on where things just don't fit the way that we thought they would, and then we have to start making adjustments to the chassis on the fly. If we built the chassis first and tried to fit everything in on top of that, when I see people who say that they, they're not good at building, that's kind of what I envision in my mind, is that they had this idea of what they wanted to build, and by the time it got from their brain to their garage bay, there was a disconnect somewhere, and they weren't happy with it, and they didn't really feel like it was possible to bring it around to what they originally wanted. And a lot of it is just rushing, trying to get things done too quickly, trying to build the bot faster than is reasonable, not taking any kind of enjoyment out of the process. I mean, you play a game like Robocraft and aren't really interested in building the robot. I get that. It's cool. But to complain that you have to build it is kind of silly. It's like going into Call of Duty and complaining that you have to use a gun. Like, that's a major, major part of the game here is building. So if we can adopt a few attitudes and philosophies with regards to doing it, um, I don't want to say right. We're not, we're not trying to apply a value judgment here, but you get the idea. It's, there's certain ways that are advantageous that eliminate certain problems later on down the line. And one of those is taking a little bit of time to lay things out to get a feel for the spacing, how they how they go together, all that other stuff. And so we've got four tier 10 SMGs. That's all I could afford. We're going to be using these four to kind of do the layout for uh, um, what will eventually be nine tier 10 SMGs on the top of this box. So we'll kind of mark one position and then grab the SMG from that position and move it to the back and kind of go from there. We're using white cubes for this because you know I don't build with cubes and that makes it very very easy to see at a glance what is a part of the layout and what is a part of the actual bot because we've got that little squiggle for the spine there. It's not that big of a deal at this stage to be making a, a big delineation between the two, the cubes and the prisms. But it's just a habit that I've gotten into anytime I am doing a layout is to do it with cubes. And that way I know very, very easily what doesn't belong in the finished product, so to speak. So you can see we've got four, four guns laid out properly. They all fit nicely. And that's basically the halfway point from front to back. Total of nine guns so we can afford to lose three and still have maximum damage output means we'll have sort of like a diamond pattern on the top of the bot that's stepping up from the front to the back so that we're not worried about guns firing into the back of one another in their most basic positions. Once this is done, then we can move the layout relative to where the chassis is going to be in the garage. The one thing about this is that I couldn't really tell where I wanted the, the guns to be inside the garage until I got the layout done. So. It's not a bad thing to do a layout and then to have to move it. The nice thing about building a framework out of this, out of cubes, is that you can count the space between things much easier than if it's just open air. It's, it's a lot harder to count air than it is to count cubes. So it's not that difficult necessarily to move that frame that we've built upon back to fit properly onto the chassis once we get into a position where we know how big that this spine for the chassis is supposed to be. So we've got that mostly in mind now. We've got an idea of the spacing, how far front to back things need to be from one another, left to right, how far they need to be from one another, including the benefits, of course, as you step up, you can move things a little bit closer so that, you know, they don't have to take up so much space. You get the idea, right? It's all coming together. Now, we need to talk about some of the design decisions, why I chose the weapons and, and the mobility 
uh, system that I did for this bot. First of all, SMGs, it's not surprising. SMGs are good right now. They're very good right now. People are getting good results with SMGs. Some people call them overpowered, but that's because they aren't looking at the big picture. Plasma is not doing so well right now. It's kind of dull and it's very inconsistent and that makes it a very frustrating kind of weapon to play with. It's, it's not... Uh, you don't want to see it so that every lob of plasma destroys a bot. That's definitely not what anyone is asking for, but when you fire a, a full spread of plasma at a bot and between the splash damage and the direct contact it makes, it does less than 5,000 damage when the tooltip says it should be doing 120,000 plus. You can only explain away electroplates so many times before it just it doesn't matter anymore. It's one of those things where um, I've actually had that happen where someone is flying around in a bot that is basically destroyed for all practical intents and purposes. It's a pilot seat and a few blocks and maybe like a thruster or a hover blade or a gun or something. They've got a little bit of mobility and they're just kind of flopping around and you shoot them and you know you hit them, but you had to shoot them three times before they finally destroyed. I had that happen to me yesterday and that's when I said enough is enough. I'm not doing this with the plasma right now. We're still the pretty hate machine. I'm really happy with the bot itself. Um, and we still have lots of upgrades in mind for the chassis once we have the CPU that we can afford to make those upgrades. That was one of the things that I was looking at as well is that I'm leveling up and then I have an opportunity to sit down and say, okay, well, what do we want to add to the chassis for the pretty hate machine? And there's really nothing you can add with 11 CPU at a time. So we need to level up and rather than waiting in the one bot that's kind of fun but not as fun as it could be we're, we're gonna build another one also having two tier 10 bots in the garage means we'll get double the rp for the daily double bonuses so that's not a bad thing that kind of describes smgs why we're choosing smgs nano disruptors we're gonna do at some point in the future and it's gonna be a this is how i build a bot that doesn't get in the way all the time kind of build um it's gonna be a this is how i build a bot that doesn't contribute to medic circle jerks uh, kind of thing. It's a, it's a little bit of tongue in cheek. It's a little bit trolly. We're not trying to make anyone feel bad, but at some point you got to stop complaining about things and set an example. You know what I mean? So if I'm going to be poking fun at medics for getting in the thick of things and just being in the way without actually contributing anything meaningful or making it too easy for people to just cluster around them and wait to be healed to 100% when they should be out fighting and helping the rest of their teammates. But time, sometimes you just got to put your money where your mouth is, you know, so that's why I'm actually going to take on the role at some point of a medic bot Because I, I actually hate the role of healer in any game where there's been the option to be a healer I've tried it and I just do not like it It's so different from everything else and so far removed from what I'm interested in that it's never number one on my list of priorities to do so that's why we aren't doing the nanobot right now is because holidays people are kind of broke they're a little bit cranky um, they didn't get the color iPad that they wanted, whatever, <laughs> all these things. It's just let them relax a little bit after the holidays. You know, they need a holiday from the holidays before we start poking fun at them again. That's the whole idea. <laughs> I'm not going to do a, a pure Tesla build. Those are, people are having fun with them and there's some really entertaining stuff that people are making videos of and showing people and that's fantastic, but uh, it, it's still a troll build. It's not a uh, top performer kind of thing. It's just getting into a match and having a little bit of fun and having a bit of a laugh. There's no harm in that, I don't think, in this case. Uh, but in terms of actually me building one, no. No, I don't see any, any rush to do that. In terms of the mobility, how are we going to get around? We've got Caterpillar Tracks. was an option brand new. I haven't built anything with those yet. I don't see that being a good choice for this kind of bot. I see SMGs as frontline kind of fighters, especially one this size. You can start to see a little bit now the size of the bot as we're moving the framework back over the chassis. I, 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 putting it on um, Caterpillar tracks just kind of means that it's going to be in the ass end of the column moving forward to the fight. You know, and then it's got to push through everybody to get to where you really want it to be. Because in a pub public group, no one's going to be waiting behind that guy. No one's going to be waiting for him to take up the front line positions. They're all going to be going there first, and then you've got to muscle your way in to get the position that you need. So, Caterpillar tracks, maybe we'll put them on the on the medic bot, <laughs> just because. Uh, but not right now. Wheels, wheels are fine, but when you get used to the benefits of the hover thing, it's it's tough to go back to wheels. The benefit to wheels is that you can get a working cruiser setup with far few, far less, I guess, CPU invested. 
in the, the whole setup. The, with the hover kind of thing, you need the hover blades, you need the thrusters, you need them. Wheels, it's a nice to have. Hover, you need the thrusters for the forward momentum, otherwise it's very, very slow. And you also, if you're really serious about having a hover that's, that's an asset, there's rudders on there to keep it stable so that it doesn't wobble all over the damn place like a medic who gets in your way. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I had to. So that, that kind of stripped things down. We're not going to do the, the caterpillar, we're not going to do wheels, not going to do another flyer, we're definitely not going to do another interceptor. Walker legs are just slightly faster than the, the caterpillar tracks. So I wasn't really huge on doing another walker. This one's going to be in your face, loud and proud, and uh, moving around as we need to, depending on what's going on with the situation. So that explains the design, kind of the main design decisions in terms of what we wanted to use for what effect. And as always, the bot will teach us the error of our ways when we actually get into our first few matches. Now, despite all that extra time with the layout of the guns and then changing things around to different colored blocks and then moving that framework over the chassis, you can see we haven't really wasted as much time as if we had done the chassis and then tried to fit the guns on after the fact, because you saw how many changes we made to the framework, just getting the guns into place and spaced out the way that they had to be in order to fit. So I, I'm a big proponent of having that patience when you're going into the build phase for a new bot to just take your time and relax and enjoy the process, lay things out, kind of get a feel for where you want them, and don't make too many commitments early in the build phase, because if those things don't work out, that's when it starts to get frustrating. That's when people start to think that they can't build, is that they, they kind of, they've got this idea in their head, and by the time it gets into their garage, it's very different, and they don't know how to fix it. Just relax a little bit. It's like Legos when you were a kid. It took you a little while to learn how to use the Legos, and then all of a sudden you're building really cool stuff. It's the same thing here. So now we've got basically the outer profile of the chassis to worry about. We've got the length laid out, the spine is in place, it's the final length. So we have to kind of figure out how we want this thing to look on the outer edges. We want a little bit of space to either side so that the guns aren't basically right on the edge where it's easy to shoot the blocks under them and knock them off. That's one of the considerations at this point. And then from there it's basically um, a bit of aesthetics and also a bit of not having things so big that we can't afford to finish the bot because we need too, too much CPU for all the blocks. So we're kind of doing one side, not worried about doing the mirror on the other side so that if we don't like the way things are going, we can just fix it on this one side and then once it's done, once we're happy with it, then we can mirror it onto the other side and everything will be happy, everything will look the way that we want it. And there, just like that, that's one side done. So now we just have to duplicate it to the other side. So the next episode, is going to be all about the gun mounts and it's going to take a little time because again we're doing the layout we want to make sure the gun mounts are as resilient as possible a lot of the time you're going to lose the guns because damage from the plasma or the rails hit the guns and that's the way the mechanics work off goes the block but in terms of actually protecting from having the block underneath the gun popped off and losing the gun that way makes a, a certain amount of sense to invest some time into designing the gun mount so that they're as resilient as they can be without having to be a bot worth of blocks all by themselves. After that, we'll worry about getting the rest of the components in, and eventually, probably episode four, it's going to be that large, uh, we'll finally get it into a practice map and we'll see what it looks like when it's driving around shooting stuff. So if you want to be notified about those videos when they're added, you can always subscribe to my channel. You can also get in notifications if you follow me on social media. Links for that are in the information section below the video. Please leave your comments and feedback. I read them all, every single one. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.